Hi! I'm Sylvia from Vintage Kitchen Vixen, where I share tips for simple living, creating memorable gatherings, and preparing wholesome and traditional recipes with a vintage twist. And today I'm going to be talking about sourdough starter. Actually, just hold on. Sorry, my dehydrator was on. I picked up a bag of bananas. They were discount bananas for $2 yesterday, so I nabbed them and I'm, I sliced them up and I'm dehydrating them because they make really good healthy snacks. Sourdough seems to be all the rage these days and I completely understand why. With the pandemic going on and people having more time, there's been a lot more baking and I mean, doesn't it make sense because for a while it was hard to buy bread at the store because bread was completely sold out. Yeast sales have gone up 600%, at least I recently saw that in an article, which is huge. Like, at what other point in history have yeast sales shot up 600%? That's insane. So as a result, it's been harder for stores to stay stocked up on yeast, and people have a hard time baking without yeast, because how else are you going to get your products to rise? Baking powder and baking soda only get you so far, and when you're making bread, you don't usually want to rely on those two chemical leaveners very much. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make your very own sourdough starter and how to maintain it, but first we're going to answer the question, it is a live culture of lactic acid bacteria and wild yeast that feed off the starches and sugar found in flour and it ferments the flour so this sourdough starter that you get when you mix it in with flour and water and any ingredients that you have to make bread it actually ferments the flour and it renders it more digestible so the longer your bread rises the longer your dough sits and ferments, the more digestible it gets. So some people who have a hard time digesting gluten, they seem to do a lot better with sourdough products, even though there is a little bit of gluten in it. Um, there are gluten-free sourdough starters that you can get your hands on if you do suffer from celiac disease, but that goes outside of the scope of what I'm talking about today. I've never made a gluten-free sourdough starter, nor have I worked with one, but you can find them. Farmhouse on Boone actually has a gluten-free sourdough starter, so I'll link that below in case you are gluten-free or you're avoiding gluten and you do want to get into sourdough I've heard a lot of rave reviews about that so I'll link that below and she also has a lot of sourdough recipes along with my friend Katie at Hearts Content Farmhouse because once you have a sourdough starter you're going to want to use it and since I'm just getting on board the sourdough train I don't have any sourdough recipes yet but they are coming not only does sourdough starter render baked goods more digestible but in my opinion, it also makes these products more delicious. It gives it a little bit of a tang. And when I was a kid, I was nuts about sourdough bread. It was hard to find. And if I would have known how easy it was to make and maintain a sourdough starter, I probably would have gotten into baking at a much younger age. Growing up, one of my favorite series was the Laura Ingalls Wilder books, um, you know, The Little House on the Prairie, Little House in the Big Woods. And something that our ma did was keep sourdough starters. So there are a couple of scenes where she talks about her ma's good sourdough bread. And I just always daydreamed about it when I was a kid. So whenever my mom was able to get her hands on sourdough bread, which is a lot easier if you live by a good bakery uh, which is to feast on the sourdough and I I love the tang not all sourdough bread has tang mind you the longer your dough sits the more that tang builds up so if that's something that puts you off from sourdough is that idea of having a tangy bread don't worry about it like if you just do a short ferment like even eight to ten hours you're not going to have a super sour bread like it's just going to taste like normal bread but delicious bread. Actually, speaking of bread, I actually have a sourdough bread that has just finished its second proof, so I'm going to pop this into the oven. So I made, so yesterday what I did, and I'm going to talk about this in more detail as we go along, but yesterday afternoon, I took out my sourdough starter from the fridge, which is this mangy looking jar right here. Um, yeah, <laughs> I took it out from the fridge, I fed it. Again, I'm gonna talk about this in detail but I fed it some flour and water, and then by the time the evening came around, my starter was up here, and it was ready to use. It was bubbly, it was active, and that's what you want, because when it's bubbly and active, you know that it's going to make whatever you're baking, you're, it's going to make it rise. 
So when it was active and bubbly, I mixed my bread dough. My bread dough proofed overnight. So this has been sitting for, oh, what time is it now? This has been sitting for over 12 hours. Some people, when they're baking bread, they let their dough ferment even longer, like 24 to 48 hours. But this is just a short, shorter ferment in comparison. So I'm going to pop this in the oven real quickly. Don't mind me. Normally when I bake bread, I have like little banditon baskets and I have, and then I use a Dutch oven. So I get these beautiful rustic country style loaves. In French, they're called boules. I'm just doing a loaf pan today. Um, actually, it's a recipe from Artisan Sourdough made simple by Emily Rafa. This is one of my favorite sourdough books. Actually, it's the only sourdough book I own. But when I first got interested in making sourdough, I picked up this book and it's an excellent resource. She has delicious recipes. Everything I've made from here has been awesome. Everything from focaccia to basic loaves of sourdough bread to waffles. Um, so great book. I'll link it below if you want to check it out from the library or something. I highly recommend that book. It's great for beginners. So now that my bread is in the oven, how exactly do you use a sourdough? But like I was saying, when you're planning on baking something, you want to pull out your sourdough starter in advance because it needs time to activate. So my sourdough starter, I keep it in the fridge when I'm not using it. If I baked every day, which I don't, I would just keep it on my counter and feed it daily. The sourdough does get hungry, so you do need to feed it. And you can tell it's getting hungry when it smells really sour or if you have um, a pool of like brown water at the top, that's called hooch, again, I'm gonna talk about that later. But you have to feed sourdough starter. So whether you keep it in your fridge or you keep it on your counter, you need to feed it. So if it's on the counter, at room temperature, feed it daily because with any ferment, the warmer it is, the faster it will ferment. When you put it in the fridge, fermentation doesn't stop, but it slows down drastically. So when it's in the fridge, I need to feed it at least once a week, every two weeks. But sourdough is very forgiving. And I have heard stories about sourdough starter being left in the fridge for months and the sourdough owner being able to resuscitate it. So it, it is pretty resilient stuff. Unless, I mean, if your sourdough starter is covered in mold, I would probably throw it out. But I mean, if you go a couple of weeks without feeding it, you're going to have an unhappy starter, but you can probably bring it back to life, no problem. But I use my sourdough starter at least once a week. So I just keep it in the fridge. If you keep it in the fridge, you just pull it out. You let it come to room temperature a bit and then you feed it flour and water. And it's the same thing if it's on the counter and it's flat, you feed it flour and water. How much you feed it depends on how much sourdough starter you have. It's like a one to one to one ratio. So if there's one cup of sourdough starter, you put in one cup of flour and one cup of water. But I mean, that also depends on what hydration ratio you, you're going for. I'm like one of these people who believe that baking is a science, but when it comes to my sourdough starter, I quickly abandoned measuring out my flour and water when mixing in my sourdough starter. Like at the very beginning, when you're getting established, you want to weigh it out, make sure that your proportions are just so. But once it's established, it doesn't matter as much. So for example, if you want to have like a country style loaf, that's usually around a 65% hydration ratio, which means for every 100 grams of flour, you're going to add 65 grams of water. Again, I don't measure it. I just use my starter as it is. I, I kind of like eyeball in a flour based on how much starter is in my jar. And then I'll add a little bit of water, I'll stir it in, and usually I'm going for something that has the consistency of like a pancake batter. And once I have that consistency, I just let it rest. And it's never been a huge issue for me, but that's, that's just a little word on hydration. If you want to get picky about it, there are other resources you can rely on that will give you all that hydration information that you want. But when it comes to my sourdough starter, I'm pretty relaxed and I don't worry about the hydration ratio. Before I got sidetracked, you feed it flour, you feed it water, you mix it up, and then you let it sit. And in about, I mean, I'd say in about eight hours, you will have a nice bubbly starter that is ready to use. And when it's bubbly, it will make whatever you want to rise, rise. 
Now, if you can, try to get a sourdough starter that's already established, um, a sourdough starter that has character, that's already had good use and that has a good track record. You can get sourdough starter from a friend, from a family member, or from a bakery. Some people even sell their sourdough starter on Kijiji, so if you look up sourdough starter, you're going to find all kinds of cultures. And the same thing goes if you're looking for kefir grains, if you're looking for water kefir grains, or even kombucha scobies, because when you buy these things, it's expensive and it's kind of ridiculous because a lot of people just throw out parts of their starter if they get to be too much. I never throw out my starter. You do at the beginning when you're making your own. Oh, and by the way, that's the other course of action. If you're not able to get your hands on sourdough starter, you can make it yourself and I'm going to show you how you can make your own sourdough starter right now. So if you're new here, I do this little thing called silent film mode. So we're going to hop into that real quickly and then we'll be back with more Q&As. amounts of flour to equal amounts of water. I like weighing everything. You can also measure it up, but when it comes to baking, apart from feeding my sourdough starter, I am pretty precise and I like having a kitchen scale. It is one baking tool I cannot be without in my kitchen. And if you want to see some of the other baking tools I need to have, I do have a video that is all about that and I will link it below in the show notes if you want to check that out. Making a sourdough starter does take seven days. Sometimes your starter might look like it is ready, so day five you'll notice it's bubbly. Keep feeding it. Keep discarding the flour and keep feeding it and just go through the seven days. And if it's day seven and it's still not bubbly, keep feeding it. Sometimes it just takes time for the yeast and bacteria that's in your environment to get into that party mood where everything bubbles up. So just be patient. If it takes a while for it to bubble up, it will happen you're not sure, you can put it to the test by making bread. If it gives you a flat loaf, then you know it's not ready. You can still put that flat loaf to use. You can turn it into breadcrumbs, you can turn it into bread pudding. There are so many things that you can do, like French toast casserole. Um, don't throw out a flat loaf of bread. 
When it comes to my sourdough starter, I like using a whole wheat flour. You can use whatever flour that you want, but whole wheat is pretty rich in minerals and yeast, so that's what I like to use. Some people have a lot of success using unbleached flour, and that's one thing I recommend. Like, if you're going to use white flour, try to use unbleached. You can still use bleached flour, but if you can, use unbleached white flour. Some people say that using white flour gives you more consistent and predictable results, but the first time I ever tried making a starter, it did not work out. I used white flour and then it kind of just turned me off from using white flour in my starter. I mean, if you run out of whole wheat flour and all you have is white flour, you can feed your starter with that. Like, it won't hurt your starter, no problem. And you can feed it with other flours. Like, you can feed it with rye flour. Rye flour is even richer than whole wheat flour and a lot of people like keeping a rye sourdough starter and feeding their starter with rye flour, but I find that it is harder to find rye flour, it is more expensive, and it makes for a stickier dough. Uh, some people like using einkorn flour, but einkorn has a lower gluten content, and when you're making bread, gluten is pretty important. The point is you can use different flours with your starter. You don't have to be married to one flour, but I always use whole wheat flour when feeding my starter. And when you're baking with your starter, it also doesn't matter what kind of flour you use. You can easily mix a whole wheat sourdough starter with white flour or einkorn flour. Like, it does not matter. So don't feel like you're being pegged in a hole if you just decide to use one kind of flour for your starter. Like, it doesn't matter what you bake with. The answer to that question is to use filtered water. When I first started making my sourdough starter, I was using tap water, and as you might know, tap water is chlorinated and there's fluoride in some areas, and while tap water in most places it's safe to drink, there's things in there that I would rather not have, so I have a water filter that I use, so I always use filtered water. And it's the same thing when I'm making any fermented foods, like I always use filtered water. I don't want the chlorine to mess around with my culture. I've also heard that you can use distilled water as well. Just try to use the purest water that you can. When you are working on establishing your own sourdough starter, temperature does play a role. I made my sourdough starter when it was winter. In the winter I keep my house pretty cold just to save on energy. At night I turn the thermostat down to 62 degrees Fahrenheit, which is pretty cold and sourdough and any ferment really likes to be kept at an ideal temperature of 68 to 70 degrees Fahrenheit. But I just kept mine at 62, so there was a lot of temperature fluctuation throughout the day. Like it would start off at 70 and then at night down to 62, so there was fluctuation. It probably slowed down my fermentation a bit, but it wasn't a huge problem. Like it's the same thing with my milk kefir. And if you're interested in milk kefir, I do have a video. Again, I'll include a link to that in the show notes below. But in the winter, I don't have to refresh it every day. The cold the colder it is, the slower it ferments, the warmer it is, the faster it ferments. If you want to keep a steady temperature, and this is something that you do when you're making kombucha and you want to ensure that there is a steady temperature, you can use a heating pad, just like on the lowest setting, just to keep it warm. So if you are kind of nervous about that, you can control the temperature that way. And I mean, in the summer months, things get warmer, so your sourdough will probably need to be fed more often. So there are some key signs to look for, and we'll get into that. Now, you might be wondering what to keep your starter in. So, I recommend keeping your sourdough starter in glass. I, I don't really like putting ferments in plastic, just because plastics tend to harbor everything, and there's BPA and all kinds of problems with plastic. So I try using glass to store my sourdough in. So I really love these jars. I don't know what kind of jars these are called, but they have like the pop lids. Mmm, it smells sour. Yum. <laughs> of course it does. I should hope so. But I like using jars with these lids. You can usually get them at the dollar store. If not, you can use a mason jar. I've also used... Oh goodness. Can I get over there? Hold on. If you're feeding a large family and you need a lot of sourdough, like to make pancakes or waffles or whatever, like 
You can also use a jar like this. And sometimes when I have a lot of sourdough discard, I'll keep it in here. But right now, this is my sourdough discard. I'm going to talk about that soon. I'm really sorry, like I keep just bouncing, but I will talk about that, I promise. But yeah, I like using a glass jar, and when it gets too dirty, I'll just transfer it over to another jar, give that jar a wash. Um, this jar is starting to get a little bit too dirty for my liking, so probably the next time I use it, before I feed it and put it in the fridge, I will put it in a new jar. When you are starting to make your sourdough starter, you want to give it a little bit of air to breathe. So you might cover it with a damp tea towel, you might cover it with a beeswax wrap. You don't want to seal it in. So like here it is sealed in, but when you're first starting it, you want it to get a little bit of air because there's yeast and bacteria that it can access. So uh, you want it to have that oxygen. So because it is getting air, sometimes you might notice there's a little bit of a crust on your sourdough starter, and if that's the case, just scrape off that crust and keep going. It's, it's fine. Your sourdough starter is fine. Just scrape it off and mix it and feed it as usual. Once your sourdough starter is established, you might notice that your starter is a little bit watery. Don't worry about that. All you have to do is feed it more flour. Uh, it's the same thing if it seems too thick. Just add a little bit of water a bit at a time and stir it in. And when it has that pancake batter like consistency, you should be good to go. But that's how you combat a watery starter. Just add more flour. A lot of people wonder if sourdough smells, and the answer is yes. You just saw me smell this. Mine smells sour. I don't know, maybe if you have a better nose palette and better nose buds, you might be able to put a finger on what it smells like, but to me it just smells sour, which means I should feed it. Actually, it's out of the fridge. I should probably feed it before it goes back in. But when you first get started with sourdough, you might get some funky whiffs, and that's perfectly normal. It does take time for the yeast and bacteria to work together to get bubbly. They're like learning to get to know each other, they're battling it out. I mean, this isn't the least bit scientific. Just just go with me, okay? Just, just roll with it. And sometimes when that happens, you get some funky smells. So some people report that their sourdough starter smells like acetone. Some people have said it smells like fish. If my sourdough starter smelled like fish, I would be alarmed too, but just keep feeding it. It might smell like cheese, it might smell like beer, and actually I'd say more often than not my sourdough starter has a beer-like aroma to it. But whatever it smells like, just keep feeding it as usual, because when it smells usually it just means your starter is hungry. Just be patient, let the fermentation magic happen as the yeast and bacteria work together to find a solid ground. In addition to the smell, another sign that your sourdough starter is hungry if there's a little brown liquid on top of it, and that is called hooch. When there's hooch on top of my starter, like I know I need to feed it. To stir or not to stir it in, that is the question. And some people stir it in. I'm one of those people that stirs in the hooch. Some people like to drain it because they see it as spent energy, like if the starter didn't want that hooch, like why stir it back in? So some people just get rid of it. And I don't really know what impact it makes on that, but I don't mind hooch, I just stir it back in. The point is, if you see a hooch, don't be alarmed. Just continue as normal and feed that hungry starter of yours. As you saw in my little silent film mode video, when you are making a sourdough starter, Apart from day two, where you just let the sourdough starter rest, every day you discard half of the starter, and as it is building up and becoming that sourdough starter that you want, you don't want to use that starter. You just compost it, or you put it in the garbage. Like You just get rid of it. it. It is not going to do anything. But if it's day five, it's getting bubbly, it's starting to smell sour, you can use that discard, like don't throw it out. You can use it to make pancakes, you can use it to make waffles or banana bread. Since we're in a time where flour can sometimes be a bit scarce or hard to get a hold of, 
you don't want to throw out your discard. Like you want to put it to use. Why throw out perfectly good flour? And that's one reason why it might be easier just to find somebody who has a sourdough starter because then you don't have to throw out flour by building up your own sourdough starter. Once your sourdough starter is established, you don't need to discard your sourdough starter. However, I do have a tendency to discard because there are recipes that I like making that require discarded sourdough so I have this jar so what I do when my sourdough comes out of the fridge I'll feed it it'll rise and get bubbly I will put it in whatever recipe I am using it in and then before I put it back in the fridge I feed it again but since I need to put an equal amount of flour to sourdough starter in this jar when I'm feeding it I usually remove like maybe a half I don't want to put in a full cup of flour into my sourdough starter because when I take it out of the fridge again, that means I need to put in, what, two cups of flour? I need to probably double it. So I always scoop some out and I put it in a jar. Now, you don't have to do that. If you're baking more than one thing at the same time, like you might not need to do that and you can just feed it a regular amount. But the bigger your starter gets, the more you need to feed it. So while you don't need to discard, like it's not required, don't feel like you need to discard, but I like to keep my sourdough starter in a manageable amount, so I usually discard it so I don't have to feed it as much flour, and then I put my discard to use. I hate throwing out food, flour is one of them, so the way I see it whenever I throw out sourdough starter, which doesn't happen, but I see it as throwing away flour, which is throwing away money and a precious commodity at this point. So if you can, hold on to your sourdough discard and put it to use. If you come across a recipe that needs a large amount of sourdough starter, just feed your starter more than you normally would. Sometimes I use so much starter that all I have left is like a tablespoon of starter. Like I will never completely exhaust this. If like my recipe wants a cup and a half and I can't exactly fill that half cup, I'll like I'll just keep a tablespoon and then I will feed it and it'll be fine. It'll bounce back. But if I know my recipe needs more starter than I normally would have, I would just feed it more flour and it will take a little bit more time for it to digest, but the starter will break down that flour and ferment it. Once your sourdough is established and you want to share the love with somebody else, you just scoop it out. You put it in a jar and you give it to somebody else. Like You don't need to feed that jar. Share this video with that person and give them that jar so that they know what to do with it. If you get an established sourdough, you don't need to discard and feed, discard and feed. Like You just feed it. If there are any sourdough questions that you do have that I didn't get around to answering or that I didn't think of answering, just drop a comment um, below and I will try to get back to you with an answer. If this is your very first time in the kitchen, I really hope you enjoyed this video enough to hit that subscribe button and the bell notification so that you never miss an episode of the kitchen. And if you are coming back to the kitchen, thank you so much for joining me for this episode. I'm so grateful to have you here. If you want to help me out, please like this video, drop a comment, and share this video. But other than that, I do put out one new video and blog post a week. There is a blog post that goes with this video, so that is also linked in the show notes below. But that's enough of me talking for today. So thank you so much for being here. I will see you next week. Bye. Hi, I'm Sylvia from Vintage Kitchen Vixen. Is it recording? And today I want to talk to you about this yeah. truck. The tractor, this actually. This tractor. Okay, Armand. Yeah. <laughs> Will you put that in the living room, please? In the living room. No, 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 not over there. You're, Don't you're live, the but it's uh. Well. It's very bright. Yes.